I'm Gerald Miles and we are on our family farm, Kairi's Organic Farm in uh, the village of Berea, St David's, on the coast of Pembrokeshire. We farm 120 acres. It's all in one block and runs right down to the sea. It's a mixed uh, sustainable farm. We grow um, cereal crops and we keep suckler cattle, belted Welsh black. And as well, we've created a CSA on the farm. Uh, it's called Coca, Kairis Organic Community Agriculture, where we grow um, organic vegetables for the community. I'm the second generation on this farm out of seven generations of farmers, but I was born here. And Anne and myself, we have uh, four sons and six grandchildren. And now our youngest son is farming it, Carwin and Leanne. I'm Sasha Lewis, and I am a hill farmer here in the beautiful Ellen Valley. And the name of my farm is Troy Drew Drain. I've been uh, at Trudor Drain, this is my 22nd year, and Brian, my husband, he's actually a third generation farmer here. So his family has farmed uh, at this farm for three generations, but then before the dams were built and the farmsteads lost below the, the waters, they also farmed in different places in that landscape. So it was a very mobile community. The land is uh, very important. Uh, to the farming communities. They've been here before dams and throughout and so that they retain a deep knowledge of farming and the landscape, um, which I think is quite unique in a place or within a community really. I'm Elvin Davis and we farm here at Glen Cunning. We farm on the lower reaches of the Cunning River Within about a mile, it joins the Tarv River, which then goes down another couple of miles past Dylan Thomas's boathouse in Larn, and then out to sea and on Carmarthen Bay. So it's a fairly low-lying farm, quite wet. The farm is a dairy farm. It's total grass. We've been uh, Pasture for Life certified. We're only allowed to feed grass, uh, no grains or soya from Brazil or anything like that. And it's regenerative. Uh, we do not plough or anything, uh, disturb the soil. We try and maintain the soil in good health, uh, mainly by livestock uh, and their waste. We're just a partnership, husband and wife. Uh, unfortunately, no children. Uh, we bought the farm back in 1994. I was brought up on a local farm, left farming in my 20s and did engineering, and then decided to come back uh, into farming late in life. The agriculture had changed so much in the 30, 35 years when I was out of farming, and I didn't like it. The breed of suckler cattle we got is belted Welsh black. So we, we really choose this type of cattle because they're more hardy, they're very versatile, and all our cattle are grass-fed. We don't give them any corn or inputs. They only graze and have haylage in the winter. Also, we have a tack sheep that come here on holidays in October, and they leave in March. And it's good to have the sheep here because they clean the pastures up and as well, it's, it's part of diversification. The breed of cattle we have is an MRI, which is an abbreviation of Moose Rhine Isel. They're dual purpose. They provide a good calf that can go on to be reared for beef and very, very placid. It's good for the mind especially good for the mind, and especially if you're with the cattle and out in the field uh, with trees around, it's very, very calming. Our cattle are beef shorthorns mostly, and a few Hereford crosses, and we chose those because they're smaller again, they're compact in there, quite hardy. There have always been cattle on the hills. Some of the fields around here, when you go back to the old Thai maps, are called things like Kai Khloi, and, um, 
high chlyth and all relating to milk and to calves and things. So probably it's been a very big part of the, the farming history on this. So Brian's generations before kept cattle and then there was 10 years that we didn't have cattle and we just felt that the farm was missing that. There was no sort of um, muck to put on the meadows just to keep the, the grass levels ticking over as well as flowering by diversity. Um, so we brought the cattle in and they've been really beneficial in managing some of the rougher ground and they open it up a little bit and let nature in as well and we think that's a real benefit for our stock. Since we're organic we grow all kinds of plants. Some call them weeds but they are plants and plant indicators that you learn to live by. It's nice to see the bees and butterflies. The other day I saw a blue butterfly in the orchard. Very small, very delicate. It's important to farm with nature because nature can help you farming. Some of the plants, you know, flowering. We leave them for a while so that the bees and butterflies have their time to collect the pollen and feast on the pollen as they want. Hedgerows and everything are kept in the manner which they were 150, 200 years ago. This provides immense shelter for the animals, the livestock, in good and bad weather. It also provides a haven for wildlife. So we're 580 hectares of an upland hill farm. 20 hectares of that is meadow which is probably our most important asset on the farm because we crop these meadows and uh, that goes in, in the barn. We think that the herb rich benefits of a meadow are really greatly underrated. And we know that many of these plants also have medicinal properties, which we think are valuable for our livestock then over the winter months. Um, and there was this old usage in in the area of Wales of people having a Kaya's Butty, which was a field that they would put poor stock onto that was maybe ailing a little bit and they would pick at the nice things in the field and often get better in a natural way. We dug three wildlife ponds, we planted a small woodland, we also planted a small orchard. It gives you so much pleasure. I come out here in the morning or any time of the day to get the cows or whatever, and you've got trees around you, you've got birds singing. And we also have uh, what we call Ross pasture, which is sort of damper ground, and that's particularly one of the reasons why we brought the cattle in, just to try and keep a structure to it, to break it up a little bit, to let some of the more interesting plants in, but of course it's also an important habitat for things like small pearl border fertilities, and we've got lots of devil's bit scabious, and lots of bees and butterflies associated with it. We can't really farm without nature. You wouldn't be able to grow things without nature because nature puts back in what it takes. It's a cycle, the, the cows create the compost, the compost we ferment and the compost goes back on, on the land. Nature has a major role to play and we should respect it, live with it and give it space. After some 27 years of organic farming this way, we are able to produce better and more volume of crops than people who use artificial fertilizer. It's very satisfying, as a matter of fact. There are little things like the harebells, but there are little wild mountain pansies, which are like in their thousands and really floristically quite diverse. In the autumn, that area's graze quite short and uh, it gets wax caps on it. So I've been told there are six internationally rare wax cap species, which sort of puts them on the same list as the Bengal tiger and the giant panda. You know, and this is in just an unimproved grassland that again has got real value uh, to the farm and to carbon storage. Ever since we created the CSA on the farm, it's increased the bond with the community. And to me, it was one of the best things we created because you got to know the community, the community got to know you. It's difficult to convince people that part of against climate change and everything is they should buy local and support local. Well, we're holding a weekend now of a community feast of having all our local produce. A neighbor supplies us with the meat and there's about 50 people coming 
and we have a harvest party on the Saturday. It's an annual event where we will have talks, music, farm walk. You should buy locally. Farms are dependent on you. If all of us committed to shop locally, we'd create a circular economy which would benefit everybody. If we're going to support people farming for nature and producing such great quality stuff, we need to pay for it. And yes, maybe we need to eat less, but we need to eat quality. And connecting people back to knowing that you're getting a bit of nature on your plate. Well, I can't give advice to farmers, but I would give advice to the policy makers to let nature have a, a say in the way the farm is run. We will continue to manage the farm in the best way we can so that the next people that come in and take over Trudor Drain Farm, the next tenants, have been given everything and then and, they, and that they learn to love it as much as we have and rear their own family here, which is all you want really, isn't it? As you will have a look around the farm, you'll see it is totally nature friendly and people friendly. Running a nature friendly farm is vital to me. You can work with nature and nature will help you. It protects your farm.